Ladies and gentlemen, you are now watching and listening to Real Talk with Ronnie with your host, Ronald Lynn. All right. Welcome back to Real Talk with Ronnie, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a big show tonight. So as you guys know, we've been off the air for quite some time, for a few months, and uh, a lot has happened in the world since our last airing. Uh, since we last came on, I believe Israel was not at war. Since we last came on, um, a lot of crises were not happening. And since we were last on, uh, we were not days away from a presidential election in Taiwan, which is coming up very, very soon. On the 13th of this month, Taiwan will enter its presidential election. And, uh, you know, a lot is at stake. It's interesting to see what's going to happen. OK, so joining me today, we have a friend of ours who has been on our show before. His name is Dennis Peng. Dr. Dennis Peng is actually a renowned journalist in Taiwan. Um, however, he has faced some legal difficulties <laughs> in recent years. Um, after he brought up the thesis gate, which is an expose on uh, the current president of Taiwan, which alleges that her PhD from the London School of Economics was actually fake. Ever since that happened, that story broke. Dennis Peng has been a fugitive, uh, banned from entering Taiwan. And um, as of now, I believe he's actually stateless. So he has no passport, and uh, he's basically a man with no country. And we are so happy to have him back on our show today. Dennis, how are you? I'm uh, pretty much upgraded from a <laughs> fugitive to a stateless person. <clears throat> right. Yep. Now, that's a very hard thing to accomplish, right? So we'll, we'll get into that <laughs> in okay. a little bit. Yeah. But before we begin, why don't you give us a little update? I think the last time you've been on our show has probably yeah. been almost one year, right? More so than one year. Since, right. So since that year, uh, what what have you been up to? Okay. Okay. Time flies like an arrow. Um, the last time I was on your show was nearly two years ago in wow, uh, March 2022. That show was very successful. I'm also very grateful to Dr. Mm -hmm. Lane for the interview. Um, and the show was broadcast, I've received some messages from who originally did not understand Chinese. They included um, the audiences from different countries and some are second generation of Taiwanese immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, after watching your show, they began to pay attention on this thesis degree fraud. Through this process, I also made some friends who participated in the investigation and international promotion of this thesis gate scandal. Um, I remember I was interviewed by you almost two years ago. At that time, I was a wanted criminal who Taiwan President Chai Ing-wen had wanted me for 13 years of uh, for the defamation. In addition to being a wanted criminal, my current identity also has a, a new title. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a Laurel Crown. Um, <laughs> I'm one of the rare, if not unique, people in the world who has no nationality. Uh, what is a man without a nationality? Uh, I don't know if you have seen the movie The Terminal, co starred by Tom Hanks, right? And Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. Ken uh, and, and Catherine Rita Jones. Right. There is a man named Mr. Um, Nas Nasari or, or, uh, who, who left his country through Charles de Gaulle Airport mm -hmm. in France due to political reasons. Right. When he transferred at the airport, he, he discovered that his passport was revoked, hmm. just like me. So he stayed at this airport for 18 years without being able to go anywhere. My story is similar uh, to this guy. Um, up to now, uh, you might not, I mean, for, for our audiences, you might not be able to understand what I'm talking about. So I must add this because some viewers may not have watched the last episode right. of the show where I was interviewed. Uh, let me briefly describe it. I was originally a professor of the Graduate Institute of Journalism at National Taiwan University. And I also served as the, um, the director of the School of Journalism at Taiwan University. Uh, along the way, I served as a reporter 
anchor, host of primetime national TV news channels, producer, and CEO of the TV stations. My whole life, I was either a reporter or a journalism professor, but now I'm a YouTuber. My channel called True Voice of Taiwan. I've been tracking Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen's degree first since June 2019 because I found that her doctoral dissertation is nowhere to be found in the world. You can find her so-called doctoral dissertation online now with the title of Unfair Trade Practices and Safeguard Actions. But this was sent to the Women's Library, not to the official academic library at the end of June. 2019 at the uh, London School of Economics and Political Science in British. After we exposed this academic scandal, Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen secretly used the power of the National Library and Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs to contact London School of Economics. And um, the, the London School of Economics and Political Science mm -hmm. colluded and slipped this fake thesis. Chai um, slipped this thesis into the Women's Library of the LSE. Uh, you might as well go online and take a look at this so-called dissertation. There are 444 typo errors in this dissertation. The table of contents alone contains 79 errors. Even the name of her supervisor is wrongly spelled. There are as many as more than 50 correction fluids and pencils written in this paper. Moreover, mm -hmm. there are more than a quarter of the text has been translated verbatim from Chinese journals called Law Review of Zheng Zhi Da Xue, Zheng Da Fa Xue Ping Lun. On October 19, 2019, I went to the LSC and the University of London to check all the libraries and also interview local librarians, students, and faculty. The common conclusion we reached was that the LSC or the University of London has never received Tsai Ing-wen's doctoral thesis. So a student who has never submitted a doctoral thesis to the school and not passed it or an examination surely cannot have a doctoral degree. And from the time she claimed to have graduated in 1984 to today, in the past 40 years, no one has ever cited her doctoral thesis, including herself, just two months ago, uh, 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 just two months after we exposed his ugly academic fraud in, 19, uh, in 2019, that is September uh, 2019. And three months before Taiwan's last presidential election, Tsai Ing-wen sued me and other two criminal, um, me and uh, uh, Tsai Ing-wen and other two scholars who uh, defrauded Tsai Ing-wen's doctorate. She filed a criminal defamation lawsuit. The other two defendants are Professor uh, Lin Huanqiang, Huan Si Ling, a professor at the School of Business at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, who first published a 50 pages investigation report. And the other one is Professor He Defen, an emeritus professor at National Taiwan University School of Law. After four and a half years of continuous tracking, my daily talk show, True Voice of Taiwan, Zheng Jing Guan Liao, chasing Tsai Ing-wen's fake doctoral degree every single day. After four and a half years of chasing, we finally achieved a significant litigation victory in the United Kingdom. The tribunal court in UK confirmed that neither the LSE nor the University of London had re relevant information about Tsai Ing-wen's doctoral oral examination. Michael Richardson, an independent investigative journalist, and his team, through the Freedom of Information Act in the United Kingdom, they obtained information between the LSE and the University of London, the British Library, and the President Office of Taiwan. 
more than 1,000 of these emails are already available online. Uh, my dear audiences, you can check that. These emails, including two major categories, one is an internal dis uh, discussion at the LSE on how to protect the school and Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen from being exposed to the public domain. The content of the second category of the email is Taiwan's president office continues to provide some forged certificates, including the forged diplomas to the LSE, asking LSE to certify and release them to the public. Hmm. I then compiled these 1,000 emails and published a book in both Chinese and in English. The Chinese name, when the English name of this book is Evils. Evils, okay. Evils, which can be purchased in the American, um, can can be the Google's ebook and also the the Amazon ebook store. Okay. okay. So we can find it on Amazon, okay. Yeah, it has entered the bestseller list. Oh, really? Wow, okay. Yeah. I would love an <laughs> autographed copy. <laughs> okay, I can send you the email for free. I mean, the, the, the e-file. Okay. Uh, the cover of this book is an email between the inquiry manager of the academic service at the LSC library, whose name is Clive Wilson. Hmm. This is the email. The email between Clive Wilson and Dr. Marcus Cerny, who was a formal, uh, who was a former deputy director of PhD Academy at the LSE. The inquiry manager, uh, he, uh, the Clive Wilson, he clearly stated in the email that the certificate for Ingwen Tsai is clearly a fake and the UCL one is almost certainly a fake. Hmm. Up to now, such clear evidence has merged, but Taiwan's media and judicial courts still continue to cover up the Taiwanese president who will step down in 130 days. This is the reality. Okay. Wow. Well, Dennis, thank you for that recap. And for all the audience members that don't really know about this saga, I'm sure they know about it now and they can go on Amazon or on Google and search for that book and they can know the entire backstory, right? Yeah. Uh, speaking of the current president, though, you said that she will be out of office in around 130-ish days, right? Yeah. And the reason that is, is because there's an election coming up this coming Saturday, right? Yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts and predictions about the election? Well, uh, my forecast is that the current ruling party, DPP, may have a small victory. Um, they have access to various government resources to join the election. Mm -hmm. The current ruling party, um, um, they, they constantly threaten Taiwan these people with China's threats by saying that the other two candidates will surrender if they were elected. Mm -hmm. uh, just two days ago, on January 9th, Taiwan Ministry of Defense issued an emergency warning. The content is air raid alert, missile fly over Taiwan airspace, be aware wow. to all Taiwanese people. In fact, this was China launching a satellite. This strategy, you know, it sounds like a joke, but this strategy did help the DPP. The Taiwanese ruling party won the election four years ago and eight years ago. So the ruling party DPP continue to use these methods. And there's always about one third of the voters in Taiwan believe that. And um, the, this year's presidential election in Taiwan right. uh, has the best chance to political party rotation in Taiwan history. Mm -hmm. However, due to the lack of uh, unity among the opposition parties, they are likely to split 60% of the votes. And in the end, the current ruling DPP will narrowly wins, I guess. However, mm -hmm. if voters are smart and rational enough, strategic voting behaviors might change the outcomes. Okay. So just to give the viewers a little background on the election, right? 
the elections in Taiwan, the presidential ones are every four years, very similar to the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. And also like the U.S., the president is term limited after two full terms, correct? Yeah. So the current president, Tsai, she's been in office for two terms. So she's yeah. term limited. She cannot run. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the candidates who are running and your thoughts on each of them? So I believe there are three candidates running, right? Yeah. Okay. One is the... Uh, the uh, DPP, the, the existing ruling party. And the other one is KMT, is long um, the, the ruling party since mm -hmm. 1949 to right. year 2000. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a new party called Min Zhong Dang. Oh, I forget his English name, it's too new. <laughs> <laughs> so Min Zhong Dang, okay. Um, I think uh, to me, I have been a long term supporter of the DPP which is the current ruling party. However, uh, my only wish to this election is to change the ruling party so that Taiwan can truly realize democracy with the supervision and checks and balances. Mm -hmm. The current ruling party has been corrupted for the past eight years. And for instance, they closed a mainstream TV station that opposed them. This is something that has never happened since Taiwan's president was um, elected, democratically elected since uh, year 1992. Okay, in, in, in addition, the ruling party controls the judiciary to persecute those who oppose them. These evil deeds are the reason why I no longer support mm -hmm. the DPP. Okay. As for which other party will I support, um, in fact, except for the DPP, the policy of the other two political parties are not much different. Whoever is elected will be positive, positive for Taiwan, I think. I'm a typical rational voter. I think I will vote for the party that has a chance of winning, but I can't really tell you because it's so close. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it, it's still a dream because my Taiwanese passport was confiscated and I couldn't get on the airplane at all. Right. I couldn't go anywhere. So it was impossible to return to Taiwan to vote. Okay, now, given the fact that, you know, US, China, Taiwan, right? This, um, this, trilateral relationship has been very uh, complicated, right? Do you think this election will uh, further complicate the issues between U.S., China, and Taiwan? Well, if the DPP continues to be in power, arms dealers around the world will be very happy mm -hmm. because there will be endless business. And the United States will also have a role to play between Taiwan and China. Although China is not happy to see the DPP in power, but in their hearts, we might know that the DPP governance can give China the opportunity to conduct military exercises. This will allow China to gain leverage in negotiations with the Western world. A piece the Chinese military and at the same time shift the focus of the domestic uh, economic depression. On the other hand, if the current two opposition parties are in power, they may be able to form a coalition cabinet allow Taiwan's democracy uh, to have more uh, internal supervision and checks and balances which should be good in terms of domestic affairs. As for cross-strait relations, they will definitely improve, to my opinion. As for relations with the United States, I think they will continue to grow sta um, uh, stably and, um, and not change much. Okay. So basically, it's actually kind of interesting, right? So you're saying that actually from China's point of view, they would rather want DPP to win because if DPP wins, then it kind of you know gives them more leverage, gives them an excuse to be aggressive, right, towards Taiwan. Um, but if uh, one of the other two parties win, 
then they might actually work together, and that's not that's not necessarily good for for China's uh, foreign foreign policy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Now, thesis gate, you were at the center of this saga, right? How much uh, how much factor do you think thesis gate actually um, you know factored into this coming election, and mm -hmm. and the campaigns of uh, each of the candidates? Okay. Um, I think the number of Taiwanese people who understand the thesis gate and believe that Chai Ing-wen is a fake doctor has gone from a tiny minority of less than 1% four years ago to an overwhelming majority of 90% now. Really? Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so far, there have been more than 60 million discussions and videos, clips, on the internet discussing this scandal between the president of Taiwan and the British academic community. Um, there are more than 10 politicians or political figures who, uh, I mean, less than, I think, less than 10 politicians and public figures who dare to publicly endorse Tsai Ing-wen's academic qualification nowadays. And coupled with the evidence we obtained from the British side, the case has become completely clear. What is lacking now is when Taiwan or Western media or Chinese media will conduct large scale investigations and reports. I think this topic is a rare subject to compete for the Pulitzer Award. Hmm, the Pulitzer okay. Prize. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. So that's interesting that now 90% of Taiwanese uh, are aware of this thesis gate scandal. Hmm. Wow. But, you know, if it is true that the president of Taiwan has a fake uh, doctorate, I don't think that will be the first time that we've seen a high level public figure um, not be so honest in their academic you know, uh, pursuits. As you know, recently, right, the mm -hmm. former president of Harvard University, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Claudine Gay, she herself has been exposed as um, has she's plagiarized like in over uh, 50 instances on her doctoral uh, thesis. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, this seems to be actually kind of common, right? <laughs> but she stepped on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I will shoot. <laughs> right, yeah. Okay. Now, one thing that I've always been very curious about. Um, so in the U.S., right, after one party has been in power for a long time, typically the public gets tired, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the US, um, after we had eight years of Bill Clinton, right? Yeah. Uh, the following election, we had Bush, right? Um, in 2008, after eight years of Bush, we switched again and we went to uh, you know Barack Obama. So give, given that, why is it that in Taiwan though, after eight years of the DPP in charge, it seems like the Taiwanese public are still okay with the DPP because I think in recent polls it shows that the DPP candidate, who is the current vice president, right, he is leading. So why is that? Uh, in terms of the votes gain or lose, the DPP, I think, will lose at least three million votes. Oh really? Um, okay. Yeah, lose three million votes in this coming president election than the last time. If the ruling party still wins. It's not because they did a good job. It's because of the opposition parties are divided. Mm, okay. So basically the two other parties are splitting the vote. Yeah. Even <clears throat> <if. clears throat> well, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. And, um, you know, if you had to pick one of the two candidates from the opposition party, right? If mm -hmm. one of them, if you had to choose one, which one do you kind of like more? <laughs> Uh, well, pros and cons, bananas and apples. <laughs> As I mentioned before, I'm a rational, strategic voter. If I could vote, I would vote the one I perceive who is leading. Mm -hmm. So who is the one currently that is perceived as leading? It's really hard to say. It's really hard to say. Uh, okay. You know that most of the polls are controlled or manipulated by some political uh organizations or for commercial interest in Taiwan. Right. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you, like, how reliable are the polls in Taiwan? <laughs> Sadly, that uh, almost all public opinion polling organizations in Taiwan have political 
for mm -hmm. business involvement. Right. Well, that's very uh, similar to U.S. too, right? I mean, all the right. polls here have uh, some some sort of uh, you know angle and spin to it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the Chinese Taiwanese, we don't call the Min Diao as Min Diao. We call it as a Min Tiao because they adjust the result. Oh, they adjust the result. Okay. All right. The same <laughs> character with different meanings. Right. All right. Uh, I think all these polling organizations they all attempt to use uh, manufactured political uh, public opinion poll mm -hmm. to influence voters' strategic voting. I have taught research methods in public opinion polling at the Graduate Institute of Journalism at National Taiwan University for 20 years. I still don't understand why these survey agencies insist on using 50% of mobile phone samples and 50% of the home phones mm -hmm. in Taiwan, where in Taiwan, mobile phone penetration rate is as high as 90%. So this method doesn't make any sense to me. Right. I mean, in Taiwan, almost everybody has a mobile phone, right? Over 90%. Right, over 90%. Okay. I mean, so who are the people that would use a you know landline? Yes, what? A landline, like a, a home phone. Oh, okay. Um, I think, you know, the for business... Okay. Ah, okay. For um, retails, like a you know restaurant or something, right. or um, uh, old people, they don't they don't want to use the uh, mobile phone because they don't have many contacts. Gotcha. So it's it's rather biased. Okay. Now, I know that you've got a lot at stake, right? Um, on what happens in this election, how will the outcome of this election? affect the charges against you uh okay okay uh well not much not, not if, much. <laughs> the, if the current ruling party continues to be in power they would definitely hope that there will be as few a scandal as possible mm -hmm. if the other two opposition parties are in power they may pursue it but these are not important because um to me, I would ignite this topic in the media, political circles and academic circles around the world because academic fraud is uh, absolutely not allowed, no matter which country, no matter which system. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, in terms of your current uh, situation, right, your legal predicament, if the DPP were to continue being in power, um, it would essentially mean that you probably can't go back to Taiwan for a very, very long time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if the other two parties, if one of the other two parties win, that gives you some hope, right? That perhaps the charges might be dropped or, you know, lessened? Probably, yes. But no matter who in power, even in DPP, I will sue them in the United Nations, in the human rights organizations, in the right. media. I will keep fighting for those injustice, no matter who elected. Okay. Now, Dennis, uh, given your expertise on world affairs and journalism, uh, what are your other predictions um, for future geopolitical matters? Okay. Um, um, I think if the uh, current ruling party continues to be in power, relationships between Taiwan and China will continue to be tense in the next four years. But uh, I personally, um, I wouldn't, I, would, I don't think that the, um, there will be a war involved. However, uh, from the the United States side, uh, I would say um, the United States will be even busier for the next four years. Right. But the, uh, uh, the other two parties uh, to be in power, I would say the relationship between Taiwan and China will be um, getting improved. But it will not solve the fundamental uh, problems, which is the Taiwan's sovereignty cannot be um, still solved. And fundamentally, um, this problem, I think it's, uh, uh, it will be a long battle okay. for the next years, no matter who wins the election. Okay. One last question, we'll let you go because we know you're very busy. So there have been some reports out of the intelligence community that you know, from Beijing's point of view, they feel like by the year 2025, 
they will be militarily ready to invade Taiwan if uh, mm -hmm. need be. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's true? Uh, personally, I don't think the Chinese would that be would be that stupid because that's a loose, loose, loose situation. And I personally or um, um, ideologically believe and wish that the relationship between Taiwan and China were getting improved because at least we are brothers and sisters. No matter if you, you, you take it or not, at least we are neighbors. There are no reasons for neighbor, you know, uh, right. fighting each other. So I think no matter who win this election, I strongly urge them peaceful, peaceful. Peace. Okay. So to recap, your prediction is that the current DPP party candidate wins by a very narrow margin, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it depends. Okay. It depends how the other, I mean, how the independent voters will, will use the strategic voting or not. What is the turnout rate for voting in Taiwan for presidential years? Usually it's 75% to 80%. Wow. That's a lot more than here in the U.S. Let me tell oh, you. Oh, sure. <laughs> because you don't have missile threatens. We no. do have. <laughs> True. Okay, Dennis, how yeah. do our viewers uh, follow you? Or if they want to reach out to you, how would they go about doing that? Okay, we have an English uh, talk show channel, True Voice of Taiwan. My name is Dennis Peng. You can Google me, Dennis Peng. You can email me, contact me at a very, um, it's very easy to, to memorize email address, which is you may talk at gmail.com. Y O U M A Y T A L K. You may talk at gmail.com. Okay, Dennis Peng, thank you so much for coming back on our show. You can find Dennis by going to his YouTube channel. Uh, True Voice of Taiwan, correct? True yes. Voice of Taiwan. I think you have over 350,000 followers, right? Yes. And um, if you want to email Dennis, he's got a very easy uh, address. You may talk at gmail.com. Thank you. Dennis Peng, thank you so much for coming on Real Talk with Ronnie. And for our show, if you want to follow us, it's very easy. Just follow us on YouTube or on Rumble. Just go to at Real Talk with Ronnie, at Real Talk with Ronnie. Or you can just go to our website. RealTalkRonnie.com, RealTalkRonnie.com. All the information is there on the screen on how you can contact us, reach us, uh, stay up to date. Dennis, thank you so much for uh, coming on. And uh, we'll be very excited to maybe perhaps have a follow-up uh, interview with you post-election to see if your predictions came true. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Lee. Okay, great. Thank you and have a great evening and Happy New Year. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching and listening to Real Talk with Ronnie. To watch and learn more about our show, including ways to contact us and how you can be a guest, go to realtalkronnie.com.